to get back to the apprenticeship program mm -hmm. because in Germany and um, Switzerland, they, they concentrate heavily on the apprenticeship because they are saying that once the student get the right type of training, eventually that student would end up on maybe on that same job because if he does the work correctly, the um, the boss, the manager, or the owner might mm -hmm. want to take on that individual mm -hmm. because he's already prepared for the job. That is exactly what what the um, the concept is about vocational education. Because you you would like to have once you train, you put so many man hours. It's yes. about man hours into a particular student. You don't want to leave that student go, or you don't want to leave that person go that you have retrained into an area that could benefit your company. And I, I do believe that's, that's the essence of it all, where people have gone off in a sense. I have put in so many man hours into that particular person, and that person can grow within my company. It's all about growing within the company. You're starting from ground level and working your way up, whereby you also become a supervisor, a manager in, in that particular area. That is correct, and um, it is a pity, though, that a lot of people don't recognize vocational education as it is because just before coming here um, a mother saw me and say my daughter passed but she didn't pass for this section she passed for the vocational sector <laughs> like she was very much dis disappointed in our society we have this thing about vocational education um, that the child don't belong in vocational education stigma let us be realistic we all cannot become doctors and lawyers. You know how much a mason earns a day? Yeah. Do you know how much a tailor earns a day? Eh? Do you know how much a guy just come in to hang your door earns a day? Just for hanging one door. One door, yeah. How much he, if, he, if he in your house have 20 doors right. and he's making approximately $60 right. for hanging a door. Mm -hmm. So what... You do, the, you do the math. Yes, what I is he coming up with? $1,200. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just for hanging doors. Just for hanging the doors. And uh, it is true. <laughs> it's sometimes eat me out, you know, because <laughs> what happened is that the electrician come and he stays there with you for two hours. And basically in the two hours, if I had to calculate $40, I would say, well, I got to give him $80. He said, no, 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 it doesn't work. So <laughs> it worked by points. points. How many points <laughs> have he been to? And it's yes. $40 a point. Okay. You know, <laughs> and, 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 and um, that's why normally I say, look, you're either you're a friend, <laughs> because if you're a friend, you're not going to charge me by points, you know. And um, <laughs> if I had to come again, uh, one of the things that I do love is plumbing. And we'll always need plumbers. <laughs> so I'll come back as a teacher also, but also concentrate on the little side job of doing plumbing because it is so important that we as um, educators, we as um, individuals out there preparing our students to be functional. If you want to be functional, you, are, you have to do something with, with your hands. But I can't get it in the heads of the parents, because I think it's mostly the parents, who wants their child to go in the academic section. We, we, have, to be, we have to be very realistic. I'm, I'm very much an advocate of vocational education. Mm -hmm. why, am, why am I an advocate of vocational education? Because moving it with your hands, you, you're not only thinking with your hands, you have to think before you do something. Right. Because when, when a tiler comes into your house, he has to know exactly how to square that um, that, that room before he, he laid one tile down. And he always start by laying one tile down and from there he mm -hmm. can branch out. Right, right. The, thi the thing that I believe in also is that you can start the same thing. That I, I, um, let's take a hotel, for example. I can start as a bellhop, mm -hmm. you know, and I can work my way from a bellhop up to supervisor. Mm -hmm. From the supervisor I work my way and I can end up working in the front desk right? because I have learned the bottom of it and work yeah. my way up. So no one can tell you anything about what's happening on the bottom. Of the room. I've been there. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with vocational education. People have to realize everything nowadays is a vocation. 
you know, because even to the lawyers, mm -hmm. as much as money as they make, they're still going to call in the guy to lay a carpet down. You know, they're still going to call in the plumber to come fix the sink. Right. You know, so let's be realistic. You can have a vocation in the vocational area. Yeah, because um, most, most um, vocations that are serious, because without a doctor, without doing your, um, your residency, you cannot become <laughs> a doctor. A lawyer, without doing their um, residency but also, I don't know how to call if, it, if, but... But if you, if you boil it down, I could become a doctor in plumbing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right, I, I, right. You know and, and, and you can work your way up becoming, you see, I like the word entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. You right. see, the entrepreneurship, we have to go get to that, mm -hmm. whereby we always have to tell our, um, our um, young students, returning students, you don't always have to work for someone. Right. But if you create something, but then our market have to be able to uh, also fund mm -hmm. that, that person who wants to go into that particular area of entrepreneurship. That's true, because... Um, my son, I always refer to my son, he did, he did um, business as a major and marketing as a secondary major, mm -hmm. but he found out very quickly in college that if you post some things on YouTube, that um, you could make some money. <laughs> <laughs> and um, hair cutting at the time, barbering at the time was something important to him, so he taught people on um, YouTube mm -hmm. to cut their hair. And he made quite some change in college. Now, after he got his degree, he did something like what my professor sa said. If you're going to do things on YouTube, blogging and vlogging, now that you have a degree, you, you, you go outside of the, the box. box. And that's what my son is doing right now. He is his own boss right now. He travels all over the island. He's a vlogger, blogger whatever they call it, and um, he does the marketing for whoever wants. Um, I know he comes back for St. Martin. When there are projects on St. Martin, he gets a job. And so anytime I see my son here, um, he got some job here in St. Martin <laughs> to do because he has an office here in, in St. Martin. And, um, but if you see him during Christmas time, he come to visit his parents. So <laughs> every <laughs> but, Christmas but, but, he comes. I, I even look, I, t I even take it a, a little further. I, I like to touch all, yes, all right. aspects of vocational education. If we take um, cosmetology, you know, people will say, oh, you're going into cosmetology. But there are various aspects of cosmetology. Yeah. I, I travel, we travel throughout the Caribbean. Yeah. We saw a guy just airbrushing. Mm -hmm. And he was airbrushing nails. Right. A right. guy. I, mm -hmm. I talk, I'm mm -hmm. not talking a girl. I'm talking a guy. Yeah, 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 airbrushing yeah. nails. And you know how much just to airbrush a nail? Mm -hmm. That's money. Ching, yeah. ching. You yeah. know, nowadays you have to look at what is working for the, um, the economy. Mm -hmm. If we will go out there in, vocational, in the vocational area and say, we're going to standardize all the cosmetology um, places here on the island, then we know when we go into to one of these mm -hmm. um, parlors, let's call it a mm -hmm. parlor, that you know that you, you, you're getting quality, quality and standard, standardized right, um, right, right, treatment. Right. And but we, we, we have to, we, we're still working towards that. I think uh, education, uh, the education part is still lagging. We're still trying to, to do certain things. But cosmetology, therapist, you talk, not everybody could come in and say they're going to massage. Right. And they might massage the wrong thing and boom, right. you end up by the doctor. Right, no, right, but right. Let, let's, let's, let's look at vocation, vocational ed education or going into a vocation area as is, it's something very, very, uh, how you say? It? It's very important and, and, yeah. and um, it, it's, it's relative to what we need right now. Mm -hmm. and you were working on it, I was working yeah. on it during the time that we were taking an active role in yes. the innovations that are t were taking place in the late 90s in Curacao, yeah. um, where they were instilling on us the different and the importance of the different types of education. Yeah. By the year 2020, it was supposed to be one type of education where uh, vocational education would have been integrated 
into the academics so a child would have been able to excel in academic sub subjects that he was good in and also excel in say auto mechanic so he would have been very good in English and maths and whatever but he also wanted to be an auto mechanic so he will be on that level you know let us be realistic I've been being very realistic my son let's say for, he graduated um, Marvel yeah Marvel when you look at the, the Marvel film what can the Marvel child really do yeah. and I ask that particular question can they work with their hands? They can't. Right. Because they did a lot of book work, academic. But the thing of it, we have to learn to transpose the practical into the real world. I, I love the, 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 the wording, getting into the real world. Right, because right. when you leave school, you're going into the real world. And when you go into the real world, oh, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. I missed that. So what, a, what a, um, the, the, the job play is going to tell you? Um, sorry, but you need to get experience, three or five years experience in that job before and come back to me. That's true. Where do you get your experience? That's what you're going back to, um, to the, um, to the apprenticeship. apprenticeship. Right. That's where a person will gain the experience. While being, being in school, they are studying, doing the academic plot, but they continue also doing their practical, and that will give them that, that leeway into the, into the market. I remember going to the ARCD um, conferences <laughs> in the 80s when they saw that something was wrong with our educational system. Um, they brought in a speaker by the name of Lee Ayakoko. I think yes. he ran the Chrysler, Chrysler um, co company to yeah. a very successful venture. Mm -hmm. And he said that in education, we need to produce a product. And we have to go to the suppliers in order to produce that product. We can train someone academically, mm -hmm. but if, if we cannot take that ch um, student and place them into the job market, then we have failed. We need to go out there and check the job market. What does this individual need? Mm -hmm. Does he need filing, this, this, whatever? And then we have to teach that to the kids. And that is where uh, I think our biggest, biggest, biggest shortcomings. We, one of the things that we have to do here in St. Martin, getting back to the question about mm -hmm. getting people interested in vocational education, we need to inform them. We need to inform them. And this is one of the main points, main reason why I started this program, okay. to inform the people of the importance of vocational education. You take a child now. If you have grandchildren right now, we give a grandchild a phone, they could use a phone better than us, yeah. and they rip it apart. They don't have no kind of education. But with that same phone, <laughs> if you take that same phone and, and they really study the, the, the nitty-gritty of the phone, they could end up getting a job within, the, in the, within that particular just um, repairing phones. Right. You right, know, but we have to. We, you see, but if you if we don't if we don't educate our masses about education, yeah, I think this is a very good program. As a start, I must Thanks. commend you <laughs> of 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 start starting this 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 type of program, because it's it's very it's dynamic. Because people need to be enlightened. Yeah. Because if we if we're going to come, we are all, right now. We are, let's ca call it a one pillar society. Right. If we are catering towards tourism, then if, if, the pink, if the pearl, for example, is coming online, we should know, already know in advance the pearl need X amount of, right. of persons in a particular area. Yeah, yeah. And then what happens? Bing! Vocational education, labor department works together in order to get mm -hmm. those individuals lined up with whoever is coming here and whomever is planning to open a business here. Right. So I cannot open my business and say, I'm bringing in 20 persons to run my company. No, mm -hmm. you, yeah. you're opening a company. Hey, what do you need? What are your specifications? What do, and, and exactly, we got on the line. And we create programs in order to 
facilitate, uh, facilitate that particular company. And, and, and Richards, and that is exactly <laughs> what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Establishing standards. Stand standards. Correct. That's what vocational is all about. Yes. Because if we set those standards, we could teach everybody on the same level. So when we produce a mason, the standards that have been set is the same all over. Nobody could tell us, well, we don't have a mason. We don't have this. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. I have seen that in Aruba, Curacao, in all those places, mm -hmm. whenever they brought in somebody from foreign, they're always a counterpart from the island next to them, you know. Not only a counterpart. Eventually. Right. Not only a counterpart we got to look at, but also when you're bringing, when you're bringing in someone, that person also has to be tested to our standards. Right. And right. Not, not to the standards of hence right. whence they came. Right, right. You know, right. so it's a lot into education which people don't look at. But when, when you start bringing in these major hotels, I do believe we have to look at our vocational schools mm -hmm. to see where and when these, peop these persons are graduating. We also have to look at how many students are out there studying. Can right. we bring them back? Because we are, we are creating mm -hmm. a number of students every year mm -hmm. which are not coming back to mm -hmm. our island. So what do, you, what do you call that? Okay, brain drain. Brain <laughs> okay. <laughs> we I rest my case. We have brain drain. <laughs> and one of the things is that um, we have... Um, like you mentioned, is a needs assessment. Yes. In any vocational education, to keep it up to date, you must have a needs assessment because that, in that sense, vocational education would always be active because we would know what we need. Because but if we flood the area with too many cooks, correct, then we have a problem. But you also, uh, not cutting your cards, we also have to have a vision of course, of, uh, of vocational education. Okay. If we do not have that vision of vocational education, then we are not, we're going up a creek. Uh, I understand you know? where you're coming from, Vernon, yeah. and we have experienced yes. that, that our people don't have any confidence in their own mm. people. Correct. Because they go Holland, they go Spain, they go... Timbuktu look for people to bring them back here. You know what a Dutchman once told me? Mm -hmm. He don't know why they don't use people like you in mm -hmm. St. Martin. And that's why I don't have them out anymore. The Dutchman used to come from his institution and the first thing he wanted to do, he wanted to meet with all the principals and all the Correct. experts on the <laughs> island. So he gets the information from us and then he puts down our information, and he draw a conclusion from our information. That's why I don't go to those sessions anymore, because I know they're looking to get my expertise. Mm -hmm. Our government, our people have to have that confidence in their people. Correct. We have competent people. <laughs> nowadays, people say I shouldn't brag about myself, but after being 40 years into education, mm -hmm. I could brag on myself that I know the information. Mm -hmm. We know the information. We have traveled and we know the shortcomings yep. of St. Martin. One of the biggest shortcomings, the Dutchman said, was, was in the bus halter for Bay. When we started preparing for vocational education, it was already passed. We started mm -hmm. um, looking for vocational education when the exam no longer exists mm -hmm. from Holland. And we had to find a new way to get an exam. Really and truly, is that a way for us to invest into vocational education? You know, we have to be, t there's two things that, play, that is playing a role. Number one, was our education broken? Yeah. No, it was not. Okay. Did we need improvement? Yes, we always need improvement. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we have to look what happened in the past to go towards the future. But we cannot make the same mistakes as we did, as we did in, in the, the past. past. And, and that, that is our problem. Um, I started out here, I got a scholarship in, I got a scholarship in 1975 mm -hmm. with the objective to be one of the pioneers in English as language of instruction. And guess what? There was a plan, but there was no continuation. 
we had a plan to implement <laughs> English as language of instruction. However, um, they started a pilot scheme um, where it would have started in the first three classes. And it ended up being for years the norm that um, English is being taught in the first, second, and third grade. And guess what? A lot of students were failing. And it's only now I'm, I'm noticing we're either going back to an all English stream or all Dutch stream <laughs> because we were confusing the kids. In order for us to do vocational education correct, I don't think we should um, confuse the kids anymore. What I think we should do is get the parents to take an active role and understand what vocational education is all about. We have to align vocational and academic at the same level because I can be in the vocational area and you in the academic area, but we're studying at the same level. We have to, we have to find that, that common ground first before we move on. But like I said a while ago, <laughs> that was the objective. That it was. Of us going to Aruba, Curacao, with all those um, time spending all of that money. Because you spend, you, spend <laughs> some, yeah, you spend some time being an uh, right. educational a, a coordinator. Yeah, a for coordinator, the Islands. And, um, you know, it, it all, it all ended up that, uh, it, you know, you, you put certain things in place, and then... If, per, if persons or people don't want to follow that concept, it becomes a problem. In the whole problem uh, that exists, um, Vernon, as you might recall, that in 1985, um, mm -hmm. we applied to get um, a complete new Polytech. Yeah. I came through in 1990, and we were awarded 22. 40 million, I can't remember the exact mm -hmm. amount. But the problem with us at a particular time that we had to get what they call the exportatie costa mm -hmm. um, in place, that type of money that would need to continue running the program, mm -hmm. and government was not able to provide that. Another thing that they were fighting over, um, Sober had put in the request but in order to get the monies, they needed a complete new school board where all the different <laughs> schools had to come together, form a board, because the vocational education then would have been for all the schools on the island, not just for um, sober. And I think that was the biggest shortcoming. Um, we have gotten a, a watered-down um, version of it. It is called the NEPA now, and you were there for some time. But my whole concept and the whole idea is in many programs that they bring, they don't think about the future. They don't think on how will I continue this program like the, um, the WAVE program. I think programs like those are extremely okay. important. And we should not look for that money just for one time thing. Mm -hmm. It happened maybe five years, and after five years, there were no more fuel injection mm -hmm. into the program. How can we do to um, secure such programs and maintain them? Well, what would you I, suggest? I, I, I believe it's, it's all about lifelong, lifelong learning because the WAVE and all those such programs, they were, they were there for the entire mass of right. St. Martin from cradle to, yes. to grave. Yeah. How, how, we, how can we sustain education on, on the island? I, I look at it very, very simple. Again, I go back to the businesses that are coming to the island. Right. Their input have to, to, um, to come in. We, we, we are getting um, mega, um, mega um, um, businesses. businesses. Yeah. We're getting mega uh, hotels. hotels. We, we're getting um, uh, quite a, a number of in investors coming here. Uh, you have to contribute, take some of that and contribute. What can you give to our country? Um, 
that will support it. I, 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 can, I, can tell, I can tell you one thing. I'm not a supporter of, of this. If I, uh, me, uh, me, you can correct me. No one going to come and tell me I need 20 air conditions for my education, so I'm going to get 20 air conditions for my classroom. Um, of course, whoever, whoever um, put in that article going to say, sure, only 20 air conditions you need? Yeah. Oh, that's a piece of cake. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but if you're saying, if you're, if you're going to tell me, well, at the end, um, when you're coming in here, I need 20 scholarships for my, for my, for my individuals. I need, um, I need my persons to, to be upgraded from, from this level to that level. Then we are talking movement of people. And then you are empowering your people. And, and that is so true. And in many countries, uh, I've traveled throughout the, the Caribbean and throughout the world and I've seen um, perfect examples in the Virgin Islands. If a new investor coming in, um, a certain percentage per year of his <laughs> business would be allocated towards education. And um, I don't know what kind of setup we have here. But um, in certain um, places in the United States, they charge a surcharge of maybe one cent, two cent on the gas, and that go for education, period. <laughs> you understand? So there is a rotating um, ball there where money is coming in on a continuous basis for education. Because most of the time, we get projects. Because you know and I know, that the Dutch is interested in a lot of the innovations that are taking mm -hmm. place, but their problem is how are we going to sustain it? And that is a problem. That is a shortcoming that we have here on the island. Education is extremely <laughs> expensive. Mm -hmm. And yes. being in a position right now at St. Martin Academy um, as educational coordinator and advisor to the board, I know that we're operating on the vocational level with not, not with all the necessary facilities, mm -hmm. not with all the necessary resources, because vocational ex education is expensive, Very. but you get your results. Because in order to have vocational education, um, I, that's why I love your idea of <laughs> the um, <laughs> apprenticeship. Uh -huh. You could send them out on a job mm -hmm. right away. But in our educational system, we have assimilated classroom. And to maintain these assimilated classroom, I, I don't know if you remember, yeah. if you were on that trip to Holland where we went to um, um, those different... Yeah. 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 When we walk in an assimilated classroom, I mean, even to get a paper, you have to go through the student, the student book you yeah, in. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and the whole operation in there, we have to get food, the students... You know, take your order, yeah. do this, do that. Um, it's not easy. No. And in some schools, they made money from what they were doing, mm -hmm. you know? In Santa Domingo, for example, <coughs> I saw them making bolts. And they were making bolts for the factory. So the money is not coming back. <laughs> we, we, we took it. We, we, I look at it very simple. We too can do that. Let's take our, our, our bank worker, what we, what we had. Yeah. was very strong here. Mm -hmm. Bank worker. What, what is bank worker? It's metal work. Yes. Metal work, that means we can do our own, uh, our own um, gate and uh, make our own um, burglar bars. We, we could have taken the same, the same system, what, um, what the name, um, with the hurricane shutters. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the that, yeah, the yeah. concept. I know, yeah. And incorporate that into the system whereby the schools are uh, uh, doing all of your hurricane shutters. Shutters. The schools, the schools. Get, your, uh, get your orders, whereby it goes through the system, just like how you mentioned. You have a guy just doing orders. Mm -hmm. You have another guy placed in the orders. You have another person, you know. It's, it, 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 so it, it, it's, it's a whole process. process. Because we will never, if we really want to make an, an assimilated classroom here, we have to keep abreast of what's happening in the outer world or outside the business and then we bring and that implemented. Uh, implemented and at the same time whatever upgrades are being done out there have to be done within the school that's true and otherwise uh, we are not keeping up to date with what is happening within our society and i must say that sir martin is blessed because <laughs> <laughs> a lady just told me that um 
Um, she comes from Queens College in Guyana and by extension is one of the best schools in Guyana and by extension is one of the best schools in the Caribbean. I said, and by extension, St. Martin is one of the best too, <laughs> I understand, because we have all the potentials here. We have all the information that is mm. needed, but the whole, our whole problem is that we think that the innovations we are not good enough for our students because they don't bring in everything that is needed mm -hmm. for the innovations to take place. For example, suppose we should have a computer in every classroom. Gee, um, we mm -hmm. don't have it, but every child have two okay, and three phones. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if every child have a phone, then we should do something with that phone innovative in school. You see, that thing, that's what they went to this digi, the digi, uh, the digi, digi uh, the digi. And when you go to those digi teams, like you said in the onset, when we began yeah. the program, you said um, these guys could just go and they could, they could turn that uh, computer up, upside down. You know the best thing to do? You can learn from them. Do as if you're a dummy. Just like how we just read mm -hmm. the, dummy, the dummy book. You're right. Be a dummy and tell them, how do you get um, to, how do you, how, how you set up, how can you set up your Facebook again? Mm -hmm. And they will go and, this, this is how you do it. Yeah. But no, you got to slow them down. You have to slow them down in a way to tell them, listen, teach me step by step mm -hmm. so I could write it down and mm -hmm. create. That's how you create a program. Right, right, so right. So the person that comes after you, so when you have to teach your senior citizens, Mm -hmm. You take the same person to teach it senior right, citizens, right. adult education, mm -hmm. how, how to set up a Facebook, Pro how to chat, right. how to set up a WhatsApp. Because it, don't look at a lot of these, don't it's underestimate a lot of these adults. Eh? These, true, the true. Adult, uh, these adults are at, on Facebook and WhatsApp. Eh? Myself, <laughs> myself, myself. When I, whenever I get a new phone, I call up my little niece and ask her, uh, I said, Sandrine, set up the phone, and it's set up for me. Nowadays, if I lose it, I try to do it on my own. <laughs> but in the initial setting up and all of those type of things, um, we do get um, the support from the younger yes. ones. And um, at our school, we're going into the media tech, mm -hmm. um, basically. And we are going to have um, internet in every classroom. Mm -hmm. We are going to be taking exams on um, mm -hmm. e exams and all of those type of things. So we are going um, catering towards the modern technology, and with that said, it means that we are living up to the um, the, 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 the the happenings. Um, in the, the changes in technology, it's a paperless world, right? <laughs> and <laughs> save um, the trees. <laughs> but what I want to tell some people out there, St. Martin is quite advanced. Mm -hmm. Because for the type of things that, um, like they're talking about Queen's College and all of those places in Guyana, what we have here in St. Martin per student, uh, wow. If we have to send a, um, what do you call the thing? If you got to scan something, we could do it within mm -hmm. a moment. Mm -hmm. But these type of um, shops in Guyana and Jamaica are something that <laughs> is blooming. By us, you could stay in your own home, scan something, and email it one time. But you hear, well, I have to go to town, I have to do this, I have to do that. Because in doing the interviews with these teachers, you get to find out so many things that we take for granted here in St. Martin. Where technology is concerned, gee, we are blessed. And that's why I, I say that we should concentrate on promoting this thing called vocational, vocational. education. And um, I know you're, you, you are in vocational education and you've seen it um, flourishing. Do you think, well, you haven't retired any uh, as <laughs> yet, but do you think you're reaching that goal to what you have set out yourself to do in vocational education? No, I have not um, reached to that particular goal, that what I would love to have on St. Martin. I haven't, because I, I thought about St. Martin, because okay. they, they're the ones who, who um, where I got my first break. 
But uh, if it was for me, I would, I would um, again, I go back to cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. I would like to see even to the, uh, the senior citizens mm -hmm. and everyone into education. Because when you go to the senior citizen home and you see them just sitting around there, we could be doing things and keeping their mind active and keeping them body. Whether they are in a wheelchair or not, there are, there are things that we can do for them. You know, because don't just remember, just yesterday we were the yuppies. Yeah, today, that's true. <laughs> today that's true. and tomorrow, tomorrow we, you you're, know, you're, you're, you're a senior citizen. Right. You I know, and uh, we, we have to look. I'm not only looking for that. I'm looking that from generation to generation, we have to be able to, to impart enough knowledge and to carry that torch, what we haven't done, that they can continue carrying that particular uh, mantle of torch forward. But uh, when it comes to vocational education, again, I would say that we, have, we, we are on the right track, okay. but we have a long way to go. Okay. Um, I, I fully agree with you when you were talking about a senior citizen. Mm -hmm. I'm on my way um, to, to, to go by my aunt. She's 97, 96, 97, and um, she still drives. She still go to her hairdresser. Right. She still take me to church and all of those type of things. And whenever I go by her, um, Tuesday is senior citizen mm -hmm. time for her. She go to one of the clubs. And when you reach to one of the clubs, like you said, there's training going on, whether it's exercise, whether it's whatever. I go on Tuesdays to mm -hmm. play domino. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, the mind is always That's kept nice. busy and there are art classes, there's cooking classes, all kind of classes there are for the senior citizen. So um, this holistic um, training that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I think it is important. It is important because um, as I teach, I teach the individual, <laughs> I don't <laughs> teach math. Math comes out, yes, mm -hmm. but whenever I'm teaching math, I remind them of a little thing that my grandmother would say, you know what I mean? If you're looking for a man, make sure he walk in. Make sure he can <laughs> communicate. Make sure, if you're looking for a lady, make sure she can talk, make sure she can cook, make sure she's working too, because in today's society, you have to be able to contribute. So. In teaching, like, like I agree fully with you that we have to teach them from young. These two year old look like they the ten year old, <laughs> and they ask him for this, ask him for those those type of things. So we have to um, meet those um, demands that our society is demanding. Now, I remember they had those um, programs in Aruba where. Um, you have high school dropouts, yeah. they go, they make souvenirs. Yes. And those same souvenirs will go back, back to the, the market and they would sell them to continue those programs. That, that, that's what I was saying from the onset. Yeah. And, and you agree with me with that. If we take a lot of these guys who are on the corner. On the block, yeah. On the block. And we t give them a, f a profession or a vocation. We, we teach them we will have less crime. Mm -hmm. Because what, what they're going to do, they're going to find out that if I take, if I take the, um, that, um, how you call it, the flamboyant, yeah. the seeds out of the flamboyant, I could end up make a chain. Yeah, right. You know, and all they have to do is polish, polish the seeds and they right, get, they right. get a chain. Yeah. And there are various other things that you can do, you know, basket weaving. Mm -hmm. um, just the other day, we, we have to go back to the culture, our, mm -hmm. real, our culture. Where I was telling a, um, a child the other day, do you know what's a cocoa plum? Okay. They didn't know what's a cocoa plum. Mm -hmm. I went to the tree. Th there's a tree right there in the right. middle of yeah. park. Okay. I went, to the, I went in there and, and I took one up and I started to eat it. They said, what are you eating? I said, it's a cocoa plum. Okay. You know, these are cocoa plum that used to, 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 to be all around the sea base, mm -hmm. all the, 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 uh, the beaches in the past. But... We have what, to what, teach what, what was the cocoa plum? You got to know what's a cocoa plum? You got me. A is, is it, is it the, pink, the yellow one? The pink one. The pink no, no, no. One. That's a plum. That's a plum? No, that's a, you talk about a hard plum there. What you look at that is a hard plum. That's a hard plum. plum. Okay. But the a cocoa plum is, is very soft. Yeah. It has a nice texture when it goes into your mouth. Okay. A very good. soft texture. I know this thinking too. 
they are thinking to that something else. You see, you go? see, we got back to culture. Yeah. <laughs> that trying to switch it. But the whole thing, all of this ties into education. Yeah. You know, whether you have a case, if you know how to prune a tree. That's true. That, you know, that's another vacation. That's true. Um, you know, and that's why sometimes on this program I do poetry. Don't, even look, don't, <laughs> don't just look for a guy because a fella cutting down a tree. Boy, that's what he walking as. Mm -hmm. Or oh, a fella pick, picking up the garbage. You'd be surprised how much those garbage men make. That's either. true because... So um, don't never scorn a, a, a person for our profession. That's, that's... When I graduated <laughs> in 1981, my Dr. Ken told me, look, Go out there and look for a job. And if you get a job as a garbage man, take it. But no, because you have a college degree, <laughs> <laughs> you can't be the same garbage man as a regular garbage boy who didn't go to college. I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I came back here. I had yeah. degrees. You yeah. know what I was doing? Cleaning people's yard and painting homes. Yeah. And, With and a you degree. made money, right? With a degree. I know. I got to survive. Yes, of course. <laughs> you know, because... <laughs> you know? Um, I remember a lady in 1981, and I used to go down the road, take care of the sheep, take care of the mm -hmm. goat. So now I come back, and I taking care of the goat, and I going down the road and singing my head off, getting on like I'm crazy. And the lady turned to me and said, that's why you'll never become a teacher. I just <laughs> smile because I am into... Um, doing the things that I still like, and not because I was a teacher, I acted like a teacher, because in those days, actually, if you became a teacher, you had to start wearing shoes now, <laughs> put on a tie, because um, unlike today, in my days, teachers were highly respected, mm -hmm. and they were seen as a role mm -hmm. model within society. And I was young. I finished at the age of 21. I was still young and running behind a goat and sheep, because um, for my grandmother, although you were a teacher, you still had to do those things but, around but, the but, house. But if you look at it, if you look at it very in a global sense, you were tending to the sheep. But at the end of the day, mm. you, you, did, you, do you, did you know that those goats and sheep mm. provided for you in order to get the education? Uh, well, they I provided food for others, to, others uh, and to, uh, that, that were eating at the table. I so knew. it's... it's they, they have to look at the effect. Why you? Why were we? Why was that person raising goats and sheep? But well, I know for sure because the milk, the milk that came from them. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the milk. <laughs> well, I didn't milk them. I, yeah, the I know. I, 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 um, yeah. I started to butcher them in 1976, and I saw where the monies and everything came from because <laughs> I was the one taking care of this sheep and goat, and since I was so going away to study. I had to start see, butchering see, every you, you Saturday. You see what happened? Look, listen to what you what you do. You were tending to the sheep. Yeah. And at the same time, you were a butcher. Right. So <laughs> look 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 at the transition. Right. You see right? the look whole the transition. transition. There's a whole transition there. It is because it's you're making a circle. That's true. You you're coming right back at the circle That's again. That's true. Because you were having to do. A job for your grandmother, mm. but at the same time, you're, mm. she was teaching you the values of life, of course. and you are placed in a vocation. Uh, we, we <laughs> are, and, and perhaps some of the politicians need to understand that uh, a real politician is in, into a vocation oh. because um, one of the leading politicians here on the island, Dr. Claude Wati. Um, he never spent much time in the office. However, his, his office was outside there, um, I think opposite the, um, the, 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 the post office is now the, um, where the... It's a jewel store now. No, no, not a jewel store. He used to sit right there. Right there, the, oh, right. right. Where um, Burger King was. Right, and right, right, and talking and, to but, the people. But, but do you know what it was? At five o'clock in the morning, he will go in his Volkswagen and, 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 and make a round. A round island. Before, so when you come and, and, and talk to him about uh, problems at the island, he already knew. He knew some of the things yes. that went on. You see, but it's the same thing that we have to do in, um, in, in education. Right. In a, you know, I know you get close to it. It's, um, it's a lot we have to do. But let's, let's, if we go back and say, let's try work towards getting education much better, voc especially vocation. And let, let's try and impart the knowledge to the masses where they can learn 
what is vocational education in that vocational education academic is on the same level, just that we're doing two different jobs. That, that is, that is um, what we are aspiring to yeah. do. And I think um, sooner or later, I will look to see how we could raise funds in order to better educate the mass. At least this is a beginning. And I would like to um, thank uh, 98.1 Pearl FM for this opportunity to explain to people the importance of vocational education mm -hmm. because my vocation I got from my grandmother. Mm -hmm. It's a definite because she trained me how to survive. She taught me to wash, cook, clean, and she gave me the, um, the teachings and the criteria in order to pick a woman. She tell me, look, first I have to get a degree. So when I carry home the degree, <laughs> she said, now you can look for her and bring home all of them. She didn't tell me to look for one, you know. And as I carried home and she started her evaluation, um, she made me realize that the whole aspect of living is a vocation because there's a teaching going on all the time. And the real teacher never stopped teaching. Even within his household, he's teaching. And um, I believe, and this is my personal belief, then I'll ask you to wrap up by giving your um, summation on um, what we have been talking about, um, vocational education, and um, why is it so important to the people of St. Martin? Well, my entire take on uh, a summation of, of vocational education is that Everyone should be part of it. It's a great journey. For me, it's been a journey, and it's still, I'm still a journeyman within that. Mm -hmm. I've graduated certain levels. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I would love them to understand the real essence behind vocational education. And you're going to see that in the future, much more individuals going to have that particular area and want to go into the vocation area. But basically, um, Vernon, I say everybody goes into a vocation. Yes, it, <laughs> is. You understand? it is. Uh, what we are emphasizing yeah. now is that we vocational. need to, that vocational sure. education and the practice that we're going into because the definition of um, education is to uh, produce a student that is functional. Mm -hmm. Correct. Functional in his society, whether it's educational, culturally, you know, mm -hmm. you want that person to function and in order to function, um, vocational education must play a role. Yes. And like you said, um, in vocational education there is all different mm -hmm. levels yes. <laughs> from the cradle <laughs> to the graves. Mm -hmm. We have um, level one, level two, level three, level... And it goes on. You know, because... In infinity. You could be a mechanic. You could also be an engineer Correct. in the same mechanic. <laughs> you understand? Correct. So um, it is important that we uh, have that correlation between the academic and vocational mm -hmm. education. Um, yeah? You want to answer? No, I, I, I do believe that. You're quite correct. And I do believe that Within short, I think they should be uh, seeking professional advice. And as you stated earlier, they, they are here. Mm -hmm. And why go elsewhere and you have your expertise in-house? And you know, I fully agree <laughs> with you, Werner, because we have been fighting on that case all the time. And um, I must thank you for the encouragement mm -hmm. while I was... Um, um, the coordinator for vocational education, you always encourage me. He yeah. said, man, you could do it, you know. We from here. Mm -hmm. Not only are we from here, we are the future, you oh. know. And you will say, hey, let's go there. Let's do this. Let's find out what but contribution mm -hmm. we could make. <laughs> and, and when I got and through... And you made it happen. <laughs> and yeah, and, and the same thing. And when I got through, you say, I know you could do it, you know what uh -huh, I mean? Uh -huh. And we have this vast amount of knowledge and um, we need to um, give it back to mm -hmm. the society. So I would like to thank you, number one, for being here today and making your contribution. I think mm -hmm. I could get much more out of you. Nah. <laughs> I'll call you back. Um, um, and we will hold more discussions and see how we can make our contribution further Mm -hmm. into education. 
you know, like, uh, of course, I'd like to say thank you for having, having me here. I'd also like to thank Pearl FM, um, 98.1 FM because it's been a long time and uh, <laughs> this is like a home away from home because we all started here. You know, we started at Sabre and on the Sabre right there on Back Street. <laughs> yes. uh, so it's a journey. For me, it's a journey because I, I was a DJ at one point in time with Mama's Pearl. Okay, that's <laughs> nice. I, he gave me a great opportunity with poetry. So whenever I get a chance, um, I educate my people through my poetry about education because some of the best education we get is through what we have written. Thank you very much, um, those in Radio Land and those in TV Carib. Thank you very much. This has been your host, Roberto Celestino Arendel. This is not